Great Waterton is a town on the east coast of the island. It was once abandoned for many years after the town's springs were drying up. But thanks to Thomas for rediscovering it, Great Waterton was restored and now fully operational. Good morning, Harvey. Oh, good morning, Thomas. What brings you here? Is there work that needs to be done? Yes, the buffers up the ravine need to be replaced. They've been there for a long time now. It's time that the old ones be taken down and new ones put up. I thought there was a bridge that used to cross it. What do you suppose ever happened to it? Uh, I have no idea. Oh well, bridges get old too. I suppose it fell down because of old rusty metal. I haven't thought about Rolling River Bridge in years. Rolling River Bridge used to be part of the branch line on Grey Waterton, but one day, while delivering lumber, Thomas had accidentally tried to cross it, not knowing it was unsafe, which caused it to fall into the ravine below. The fat controller had decided to install buffers rather than rebuild the bridge itself, but they were getting old and rusty and had to be replaced, and Harvey was just the engine to help out. Uh, well done. So, uh, uh, it's time for a snooze. Huh? Do you two hear that? It's coming from across the ravine. But, but there are no other tracks that lead to the other side. Hello? Who's there? <coughs> and then, after it blew its whistle, I raced away. All the way back here to Knapford. I didn't know that there was a ghost at Great. Uh, what's the town called again? Don't be silly. There's no such thing as ghosts. Hey, but Thomas, there was chuffin coming from the other side of the ravine, where Roland River Bridge used to be. What else could be making that noise? Well, uh, I'm not sure. But I'll find out myself tonight. Huh? I'm going back to Rolling River Bridge to inspect what it could be. No, Thomas! Don't do it! The ghost could appear and attack you! How can it? There's no bridge to cross. Alrighty then, Ghost Engine. Let's see who or what you really are. Hello? Who's there? I'm not afraid. Who are you? Oh! Hello? Who's there? Oh, hello. Are you the one making that puffing sound and blowing your whistle? Well, I am the only engine over here, so I guess I am. <laughs> the name's Neil. Who are you? My name's Thomas. What are you doing over there? Well, I used to work on Sodor many years ago. Back then, the railway was known as the Sodor and Mainland Railway. But it was decided to make the railway larger and turn it into the North Western Railway. My old controller decided it would be easier to have me be scrapped instead of sending me to another railway. 
but some of the workmen were kind enough to let me hide on the other side of... Uh, what used to be Rolling River Bridge. I've been here ever since. But how is it you're still in steam? Well, some row enthusiasts found me and decided to have me restored to the best of their abilities. They come here once a week just to chat and sometimes drive me up and down the line. What's on the other side of the ravine? Oh, it's just an old goods yard used for storing coaches and trucks. There's also a small shed here where I was placed in. Bubbling boilers! What a story! Neil, do you want to work on the railway again? More than anything. Then I know just the place. Wait there. Hello down there! Rescue team here to help! Oh, why, thank you! Neil, this is Sir Robert Normby. He's the Earl of Sodor. He wants his own railway on his estate. And I could use some more help. Would you like to work on my estate railway? Oh yes sir, please sir. After Harold carried Neil across the ravine, Thomas buffered up to him and took him to the steamworks. Harvey, meet Neil. He used to work on Sodor many years ago. Oh, so you're the ghost engine, eh? Well, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Harvey. Sorry for giving you a bit of a fright. Come along, Neil. I'll take you to the estate railway. Thomas, is this the new engine? Yes, it is. Neil, meet Stephen and Glyn. You're going to be working with them. Nice to meet you. But I wouldn't exactly call myself a new engine, seeing that I've probably been here for years. <laughs> Gordon is a big blue engine who pulls the express on the island of Sodor. He's a very proud engine with a large tender and a loud whistle. Express coming through! Hello, little brother! How's life on Sodor? Not too dull, I hope. Ah, well, 
We can't all be famous celebrities now, can we? <laughs> Ugh. Maybe if you break my record, then you'd be famous too. You know fully well that I've been trying to do that for years. Well, you must not be trying hard enough then. It's not fair. I was built before him, and that double tendered show off has the nerve to speak to me that way. Yes, 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 we know. You don't like your brother. Oh, I don't hate him, but honestly, I just wish he'd stop with his silly boasting about his record. It's not that hard to beat. <laughs> How would you know? You've never gone that fast. James is right, Gordon. You never know how hard something is until you've tried it yourself. Oh, nonsense. Just you wait until tomorrow. I'll show you all I can go just as fast as Scotsman. Come on, come on, hurry it up. Why are you in such a hurry today, Gordon? He's trying to break fine Scotsman's record, Philip. And I can't waste a minute. Ah, huh, well, in that case... Take this with you. What on earth do you think you're doing, Philip? That is not an express coach. I know that. This is a dynamometer car. What's a dynamometer car, Philip? A dynamometer car helps to measure an engine's performance, such as pulling force, power, and, in Gordon's case, speed. Hmm, this could be handy. Thank you, little Philip. You know, I bet I could beat the Flying Scotsman's record, too. <laughs> sure you can, Philip. Flying Bucks Cab coming through! Must keep puffing, must keep puffing, must keep puffing! Slow down, Gordon! You aren't having a race! Get in quickly, please! Be patient, Gordon. One of the passengers needs assistance getting off board. Oh, the indignity. Hello, Gordon. You seem a bit grumpy today. Yes, Edward, I am. I'm trying to beat the Flying Scotsman's record today to prove that I can be really famous like him. Oh, Gordon. You don't need to be famous to be really useful. You just need to do your best at being a helpful engine. Well, maybe some engines don't need to be famous, but I do. Well, have I done it? Sorry, Gordon, I'm afraid not. The fastest you've gone was 88 miles. Oh, the indignity. Just 12 more and I would have done it. Oh, Gordon, you silly engine. You'll never be able to beat my record at all. 
Oh, just you wait. Tomorrow I'll go even faster than today. I'll go three times a- Gordon, you really don't get it, do you? It's physically impossible for you to be my record. Oh yeah? What makes you say that? Well, Gordon, let's look at the facts, shall we? You were built as a prototype to our class. And prototypes are, without a doubt, meant to have flaws. Then our designers could figure out what improvements were needed. Which is where our other siblings and I came into the picture. We were built to be bigger, faster, and stronger than you'll ever be. You may be the oldest, but you're still little compared to the others. Little brother. But if you want to keep trying, who am I to stop you? But perhaps take less coaches next time? Maybe that's what's slowing you down. Come on, Gordon. We gotta head back to Knapford now. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll beat the record this time. Hello, Gordon. Gordon, what happened? You were so excited to beat Fine Scotsman's record, and you. I'd like to go back to my shed now, please. Wh what? I want to go back to my shed, please. Uh, sure. Well, hello everyone! Hello to you too, Gordon! Did you beat Flying Scotsman's record? Did you go a hundred? James! Now's not the time! What's the matter? Uh, we don't know! Gordon hasn't said a word to anyone this whole time! Is he okay? I'm sure he's fine. I think it's best we give him some space, though. I've never seen him this quiet. Well, all right then. Poor Gordon's spirit was crushed. He had never had Flying Scotsman speak so poorly to him before. And deep down, Number four engine believed him. Gordon didn't know what he was going to do next, but that's another story. It was a bright and sunny morning on the island of Sodor, and all of the engines were busy getting ready for another busy day. All that is, except Gordon, who was still feeling rather down after his encounter with his brother, the Flying Scotsman. Hello everyone, here's your jobs for today. Thomas and Percy, your branch line duties as usual. Rebecca, there's a heavy goods train that needs to be picked up from Vickerstown and delivered to Knapford Goodshard. Emily, you're to pull the local and... Gordon, is everything alright? Oh, uh, yes sir. Sorry sir. I take it I'll be pulling the express today. Um, yes, but is everything...
I really don't want to pull the express today. Oh, Diesel! What do you want? Where are these trucks going? Well, if you must know, this slow goods train is going to Brendam Docks. James is the engine who will be taking it. Actually, would it be alright if I take these trucks myself and James takes the express for the day? You? Give up the express? Yes. I mean, I don't see why not. You do know it's a slow goods train, right? As in, you can't go fast? Yes, I know. Thank you, Diesel. Diesel, where are my trucks? You're not going to believe this. Gordon took your trucks and said that you could pull the express today. He did? Oh, what's gotten into that big engine? Oh well, better than pulling dirty trucks, I suppose. Hello! Good morning! Huh, I actually feel a little better. If I were pulling the express, then I wouldn't have time to say hello to the others. Gordon, is that you? I haven't seen you since the steam fair. Trevor! Long time no see. How have things been? Things have been going great. Thanks for asking. I'm now working at both McCall's farm and here at the Vicarage Orchard. Oh, so that's what an apple tree looks like. You've never seen an apple tree before? There are none out on the main line, and even if there were, I'd never be able to see them with how fast I'd be going. Well, that's what happens when you slow down sometimes. You get to see things you've never seen before. Indeed. Well, I best be off. Can't be late. Nice seeing you again, Trevor. Nice seeing you too, Gordon. Don't be a stranger and come back soon. My, I never knew how wonderful this part of the island was. I never knew there were so many splendid things to see when taking slow goods trains. That's a first coming from you. I just, well, never realised that going slow could be so much more fun than travelling at high speeds. Every day of my life it was always going faster and faster, never really taking the time to just take it all in. What's this now? Oh, hello, Edward. I was just saying that pulling slow goods trains was quite a wonderful change of pace for me. I got to see so many wonderful things on Sodor that I never really took the time to appreciate. I want to do it again. Do what again? Pull slower trains from now on, travel down lines I hardly get to travel on, and see places I've hardly ever been to. Then perhaps you should talk to the Fat Controller about it. I'm sure he'll be happy to make some changes in the schedule and have another engine pull the Express for you for a while. Actually, Edward, I think my time with the Express is done. 
it was a nice run, don't get me wrong, but after today I think I found a job that'd be more suitable for me. Oh, I understand, Gordon. Still, you should talk to the Fat Controller. He'll understand completely. Very well then, I will. Where would he be then, Edward? He's at Vickers Town at the moment. Then that's where I will be going. If you're heading up that way, then perhaps you wouldn't mind taking these trucks with you. Of course. James, what are you doing here with the Express? I sent you to the docks with a slow goods train. Gordon wanted to swap jobs for the day, sir. He took my trucks to the docks and I took the Express. It's true, sir. Gordon, what's all this about? Well, sir, you see, yesterday Flying Scotsman had told me about how long I've been pulling the Express, and it got me thinking about my time here on Sodor. Yes? It's just that, well, ever since I came out of the workshop I was built at, all I've ever done was go fast. I've spent many years not really appreciating the island I've worked on, and seeing the wonderful sights it had to offer. The Express is indeed great fun, but I think it's time for me to do something else with my life. Do jobs that are a little more slow, if you understand what I'm saying. James, please wait in the yards. I need to talk to Gordon for a moment in private. Oh yes, sir. Gordon was anxious about what the Fat Controller would say. He was worried that he would yell, send him to the sheds, or worse, have him scrapped. But to his surprise, Gordon saw Sir Topham Hatt smile. Gordon, I fully understand where you're coming from. You do, sir? Why, of course. You've done a fantastic job of pulling the Express for all these years. You've been a responsible, reliable, and really useful engine to the railway. I understand you may not want to pull the express anymore, and if you'd like to retire from it, then that is perfectly fine with me. Thank you, sir. Now, with that being said, I must make other arrangements with the express. Would James be pulling it, sir? Oh, no, no, no. James is a strong and fast engine, but he's not exactly as responsible as you are, Gordon. I shall have to make some phone calls to the mainland to see if anyone can spare an engine for the time being then I shall find a permanent engine for the job. In the meantime, you go and get some rest. You've had quite a big day from what I can see. Gordon was happy. He'd forgotten all about what Flying Scotsman had said to him and was looking forward to what the next chapter in his life would be. Duck's branch line gets very busy in the summer months. Extra visits want to take trips along the coast, and many which can put a strain on the engines. Phew! There were so many passengers at Aldsborough, I had to get an extra coach! Not to mention the goods work has gone up now that the markets are in season. 
We had to take twice as many trucks as usual. Doesn't help the twins are working on the main line more. This line is too big for the two of us. Indeed it is. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. I can see you two are being overworked right now, so you'll be pleased to know another engine is coming to help with the goods work. Oh, thank you, sir. However, a few days later, when they saw who had come to help, Oliver wasn't pleased at all. Doc, what's this diesel doing here? The Fat Controller says I'm to shunt your trains and take the goods work. Well, good to see you, Norman. Uh, let's get to work then, shall we? Norman and Oliver said nothing as both rolled off to work. Mommy, what kind of an engine is that? It looks cool. That's a diesel. They are more common at the bigger stations. You don't see many around here. Norman never normally paid much attention to the passengers. As a goods engine, he had no reason to take any notice of them. But that child had piqued his interest. Oh, um, hello. He wasn't sure what he was meant to say to passengers. Um, good weather, isn't it? Got to dash. Um, good day. What a polite engine. We must tell our friends about him. And so they did. Before long, people were lining up by the side of the yard to watch Norman shunt. He felt very nervous, but proud of his new attention. It's unsafe. Oh, what's the harm? They only want to watch me shunt. An engine could get used to this. Hey, will you two stop seeking? The Fat Controller will be here soon. Ah, Norman. I'm pleased with your work so far, but I hear the passengers have taken a special interest in you. We can't have them looming around the yards in case they try and get a closer look. Oh, right. Yes, sir. Which is why you shall be taking over Oliver's morning service. A diesel rail tour of sorts. Oh, thank you, sir. What is this world coming to? A diesel rail tour? You diesels are everywhere already. Why would anyone want to see a smelly thing like you? Smelly? Smelly? We diesels are just as good as you. Now, if you don't mind, I have to get a wash down for tomorrow. Must look my best for my passengers. Why are you looking at me like that? Have I got soap in my face? How dare you, Oliver! I know you had a checkered pass with diesels. I have as well. But that's no reason for rudeness. Norman has been perfectly civil. And the least you could do is let him pull a train. Oliver said nothing and went soberly to sleep. Norman, however, couldn't sleep with the idea of taking passengers. It was getting to his radiator. What Norman had forgotten in all of his excitement, however, was that he had never pulled coaches before. He just presumed it would just be like trucks. Now, Norman, I shall be boarding your first train to say how you do. If this goes well, this may become a permanent part of the timetable until you go back to the main line. Oh, thank you, sir. Now everyone gets in quickly please, all aboard the island's first diesel rail tour! Norman didn't hear them as he sped down the line. 
Norman was going so fast that the passengers couldn't enjoy the view. It was just a blur. Come on, come on, stop holding back. And then, it happened. With a loud bang, Norman came to a stop just beyond the platform. Sizzling spark plugs! What was that? <laughs> Looks to me like all that bumping has burst the break pipe. <laughs> Must be why you're being held back. <laughs> oh no! Oh no is right. We have had the bumpiest journey I've ever had. And now these coaches will need to go to the works. <sighs> oh dear Norman. I thought I could trust a sensible engine like you. Mr. Oliver, don't be too mean to him. Remember how you felt after you fell down that turntable on your first day? Oh, I'm going to regret this. Well, sir, maybe I could show Norm how to handle coaches and he could try again. R really? Well, as somewhat of an expert myself, I could spare the time. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Oh, um, Mr. Oliver, is this such a good idea? Of course it is, Toad. Now, Norman, just buffer up to Toad slowly. Well, okay then. Just relax, Norman. You can do it. Just don't panic. Don't panic. PANIC! This will be a long day. After a rocky start, Norman started to learn quickly. He was buffering up slowly, running smoothly, and made extra sure not to bump Toad. You've got it, Mr. Norman. Oh, um, thank you, Toad. I just hope I can do this under pressure. Coaches are so different from trucks or brake vans. Well, I have faith in you. You've shown more care here than any other diesel I've known. Well, thank you. Let me go refill before I take the train. Morning, Norman. How's the training coming? Good, thanks. Oliver seems to have completely changed his tune, though. It's remarkable how he speaks so differently to me now. <laughs> you can thank Toad for that. If it was up to Oliver, he'd have left you to be sent off in disgrace. But why? I haven't done anything to him. Oh, don't take it personally. He was on the run from Diesel's for years when he left the mainland. It left quite the bad first impression. Not helped by how stubborn he can be. Oh my! I had no idea. Well then, I'll make sure his training isn't wasted on me. So, sorry about that. J just getting used to this. The passengers were unsure about boarding, but with a little encouragement of half price tickets from the pack controller, they gladly got on board. Keeping Oliver's teachings and Duck's words in mind, Norman tried his best to be gentle with the train, despite his rough nature. Well done, Norman. That was much better than before. I see Oliver's training worked well. It seems you two really do make a good pair. Oh, thank you, sir. You did well. Indeed he did. In fact, I would like you to work here on the Little Western a little longer. Donald and Douglas are doing a fine job on the main line and would like to work there on a more permanent basis. Would you like to work here in their place? Norman was unsure. Moving from the diesel works would be a big change. But after a few seconds, he smiled. 
I would be delighted, sir. As would I. Then that's settled. Norman now resides at Arlsberg Sheds with Duck, Oliver and Toad. He has fit into the team well, not only with his rail tours, but even on normal goods work. On rare occasions, when Duck or Oliver are unwell, he has even pulled the daily passenger train. Everyone agrees that while he is very different, the Little Western would not be the same without him. Good morning, Mia. Oh, oh, oh. Who? Oh, uh, hello, Edward. Fallen asleep again? I'm afraid so. These, oh, these renovations are taking forever. I wish that they'd just be finished so that I wouldn't have to wake up so early and spend all that time travelling from Tidmouth Sheds. Well, you know... I used to sleep at Tidmouth before moving to the sheds at Wellsworth. Maybe you could find a shed that's closer to the animal park? Yes, but where is there another shed for me? Well, what about that old shed? Well, that's just an old storage shed. Maybe now it is, but with a little bit of repair it could be a perfect home for an engine. Hmm? You really think so? I certainly do. Although I'd ask the fat controller first to see if it'd be okay. I'd better be off now. There's still a lot of work to do. Goodbye, Nia. Good morning, Rebecca. Morning, Henry. What are you doing here? The Fat Controller says that the engines on the mainland are far too busy to help with the express. So, he's asked me to take over for the time being. That's great. It'll be good to have some extra help. I can't handle the work all by myself. Oh, well. It's only passengers, at least. They aren't too difficult to manage. Well, personally, I like pulling goods. More variety, you see, as well as more fun destinations to travel to. <laughs> Not like the express where it only stops at stations. Where are you off to, by the way? I'm bringing these trucks to Brandon Docks. See you later, Henry. Goodbye, Rebecca. Have a safe journey. Right, here we go. Hello, Gordon. How's shunting? Oh, it's going great so far, Edward. Lots of trucks and coaches that need to be moved into their proper sidings. Any news on the railway for today? Well, Nia is going to talk to the Fat Controller about having that old goods shed by the Sodor Animal Park, so she could be close to her new job, like me being at Wellsworth now. So that means Tidmouth Sheds will have an extra space. 
Gordon remembered the day when Edward had left Tedna Sheds and how much he had missed having him there. Well, see you later, Gordon. I'm off to collect my passengers at Wellsworth. Wait! I don't suppose you'd like to return to Tidmouth Sheds, then? Now, Gordon, we've talked about this. I'm very happy with where I am now. Although you could ask Henry. He's taking over the Express now, so that means he'll be at Knapford a lot more often now. Especially in the afternoon when he brings the final train from Vickerstown. Perhaps I shall. Uh, Gordon, you should probably know that nothing's set in stone at the moment. Mia hasn't spoken to the Fat Controller yet. But Gordon wasn't listening to Edwin. He was too busy thinking about how wonderful it was going to be to have Henry back at the sheds. Hello, Nia. Hello, sir. Oh, sir, I wanted to ask you something. Oh, wait there. I'll come right back. Yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, now then, uh, what was it you'd like to ask? Well, sir, I've been waking up a lot earlier than usual now, and I've been given the responsibility to help run the animal park, and I was thinking, maybe I can move to another shed that would be closer. Well, hmm, I don't know if there's any sheds available at the moment, I'm afraid. Well, that leads me to my second question. What if we restore that old good shed? Oh dear. I'm afraid you're too late, Nia. The Soto Animal Park have already asked if they could have that old shed and convert it into a garage for some of their own vehicles. Oh, right. I am sorry, Nia. If anything comes up, I'll let you know. Henry, I've got some wonderful news for you. Nia is moving out of Tidmouth Sheds. We have a spot open for you now. She is? But I live at Vickerstown Sheds now. Yes, but you also pull the express now. Do you really want to go all the way back there now? I mean, you are here already. Well, I suppose you've got a point. I did have to get up a lot earlier than usual. Ah, you see, if you stayed at Tidmouth, you wouldn't have to wake up in the early hours of the morning. Hmm, I suppose it would be nice. All right, Gordon, I will. Wonderful. I'll shunt your coaches away and we can make our way back to the sheds together. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, so tell me... How exactly did elephants, giraffes, and ostriches wind up spending the night here? Oh, <laughs> well, well, you see, Thomas, on his way back to the docks one winter day, when he... Nia, what are you doing here? Gordon said that you were going to be moving to another shed closer to the animal park. That's what Edward told me. I'm afraid not. The Fat Controller already promised the shed to the animal park, so they could turn it into a new garage. Oh. Well, you can have your spot back, Nia. No, she can't. She gave it up, and that was her own fault. Gordon! Not to mention the fact that you'd have to travel all the way back to Vickerstown, Henry. 
Nia can find somewhere else to sleep for the night. Gordon, stop being so rude! But Henry, having you here is just like the good old days, remember? Nia could see how much Gordon missed having Henriette in the sheds, and didn't want to take that away from him. Please, no need to fight! I can find somewhere else to sleep. After all, it's not the first time I spent the night without a shed. So, uh, anyway, Thomas was making a delivery to the docks and... What? That was very rude of you, Gordon. How could you be so harsh to Nia over a simple miscommunication? Oh, but Henry, you've been away from Tidmouth for such a long time. Besides, P Nia is perfectly capable of finding another place to sleep. That wasn't your decision to make, though, Gordon. It was still Nia's spot. <sighs> I'm going to find her and bring her back to Tidmouth. Henry, wait! <clears throat> uh, I suppose that was a little bit harsh, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, even I think you went too far. Nia was roaming the railway, trying desperately to find a place to sleep for the night. Mustn't fall asleep yet. Must keep searching. Must keep searching. Maybe I can just rest my wheels for a little bit. Hello? Who's there? Neil woke up with a start. She looked all around from where the voice was coming from. Hello? Who's there? Nia? Is that you? I'm over here! Oh, thank goodness you're here. Oh, hello, Ryan. What are you doing with these trucks? I popped a valve while making this late night delivery to Osborne Goods Yard. Oh, you poor engine. Would you like some help? <laughs> yes, please. It's too late to bring you to the steamworks, so I have to shunt you to your shed. Oh, well, at least my trucks will make it to their destination. That's the spirit. I'll keep an eye out on the tracks while you push. Thank you again, Nia. There you are, Ryan. Safe and sound. Ah, thank you again, Nia. You're a very good friend. Thank you. Uh, now you best get some sleep. Useful engines like us can't stay up this late. <laughs> Meanwhile, Henry was out and about looking for Nia. Nia? Nia? Oh dear, where are you? I'm sorry for what Gordon had said. You can have your spot back in Tidmouth Sheds, honest! <gasps> oh my! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh. 
Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Now how am I going to find... Nia? Henry, pass my buffers. Oh, Nia, you're safe. Thank goodness for that. Never mind me. Are you all right? Well, uh... <laughs> Wasn't exactly considering going for a swim tonight. Don't worry, I'll go fetch Rocky. Thank you, Rocky. And thank you too, Nia. No problem, Henry. I'm just glad to see you're okay. I'm glad to see you're okay as well. I am sorry for the confusion about last night. I didn't mean to take your spot. You can have it back. Well done, Nia. You managed to rescue one of your fellow engines from danger, and for that I am very proud of you. Seeing as you did not have a good night's sleep, I am rewarding you with a day off. Go enjoy your rest. Percy can manage your jobs at the animal park today. Henry, as for you, I want you to go to the steamworks so Victor can check you over for damage. Emily will look after the express today. Yes, sir! Nia had a long, peaceful nap and was finally well rested. Hello, Nia! Hi, Nia! Hello, my friends. What brings you here? We've brought the Topham Hat with us. We've got a great idea. Nia, you've proven yourself to be a very helpful and kind engine. I know that taking on the responsibility of running the animal park is a lot of work. And while I couldn't offer you the old shed, I can offer you something else. You can take my spot over at Wellsworth with Edward. Being at the animal park is on his bright side after all. Really? Thank you, Philip. But where shall you stay? At the old engine works over there. Before the steamworks were built, that's where we used to go and be repaired. Now it's just a goods shed used for storing trucks and coaches. Oh, I see. I figured I could sleep there now, so that way I'd be closer to Napford, and I won't be alone since I'll be right next to Tidmouth. That's great, but what will become of my spot here? Well, since Henry is taking over as the express engine, I figured it would be a good idea for him to have your spot. Oh, that's wonderful! Thank you, Philip! Thank you, Sir Tom and Pat! Thank you to you too, Henry! <laughs> Three cheers for Nia! Good morning, Nia! Have a nice sleep! Yes, Edward, I did. I'm well rested and ready to go. Hello, Wiff. Out collecting garbage at all the stations. Oh, hello, Gordon. Fancy seeing you be the back engine for Wiff today. I've been put on rubbish duties because of my attitude. Nia, I'm sorry for being so rude. I shouldn't have been so harsh to you. It's alright, Gordon. Maybe we have a spare shed for you at his waste dump, so you don't have to get up that early. I hope it's only temporary. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking blind asshole, honestly. In the summer months, the heat on the island of Sodor rises to uncomfortable levels and makes lives hard for the crews and engines alike. James, unfortunately, got hit with the worst of it. Here's James! Alright then, where's my next train? Ugh, 
first these little shunting engines ignore me when I arrive, and now they won't even get my next train ready. <coughs> Hurry up, chop chop. Get my next train, crazy lot. You're here to shunt my trains. But I'm not a shunting engine. I'm getting ready to pull my own train. Stop being lazy, James. I'm the only one ready for work around here. You lot are just standing around looking fancy. James, can you stop being so rude and thinking of yourself all the time? It's not even time for our first trains yet. Me? Thinking of myself? I'm a selfless engine. That's why I need shunters to fetch my trains so I can be really useful. Honestly, James, you're... What I am is reliable. Now, if you will excuse me, it seems I will have to shut my train myself. Ah, James, I'm worn out. Could you... No! How many times do I need to tell everyone? I'm looking for my train. Go be worn out somewhere else. By the time James had found his goods train, he was running late, and things only got worse when he found Toby. You need to get a move on. I'm being held up because you can't do your job properly. It's this heat, James. I have small water tanks as it is, but the water is evaporating due to the heat. If I go much faster, I won't make it to the next station, and you'll have to push me again. I'm the pride of the line. The fat controller relies on me because I'm versatile. You not can't go five minutes without having some sort of problem. That does it. James has gone far enough. He's been rude and vain before, but now... Heatwave or no heatwave, it's time that Red Engine learned some proper manners. Wait, what's going on? Why is Duck in my berth? We've had just about enough of your boasting and showing off. And being rude to us as well. If you think you're better than us, you can find your own place to sleep. Fine, fine. Be that way. I know you'll all be begging for me to come back. This railway would never manage without me. I'm sure we'll be just fine. One less rude engine would do the railway a world of good. <laughs> what do they know anyway? I don't care. I'm fine with sleeping out here. I didn't even like tip my sheds anyway. Oh, great. Now I'm going to be very late. Huh, ungrateful engines don't appreciate my hard work. Hey, Philip, go and fetch my coaches already. I'm going to be running late. Oi, Philip, didn't you hear me? Why is no one talking to me? Come on, anyone? Surely you'll say something to me, Gordon? Ah, James, just a moment. I need to... talk to you. Oh, no. 
What will I do? Oh, my driver told me a story once about an engine who was punished with magic until he learned to be kinder. Maybe I was a bit rude yesterday. Oi, uh, James, right? Oh, someone can hear me. What do you want, SC Ruffy? Uh, that klutz Charlie forgot to add me to the train. Just thought I'd let you know I need to be on the train with the other trucks. Oh, of course. Maybe if I'm well behaved, people will see me again. <laughs> hey up, James. Looks like you're running low on coal. Better top up with some. But there's none in the coal hopper here. Where can I get some? Heh, <laughs> tell you what, Rebecca hasn't come for this train yet. Take it from me, James. A friend. Follow my directions. I know the exact place to find a heap of coal, and all you have to do is take this train. I can't fill up with this. It's filthy. And this yard hasn't been used for years. What are we waiting for, Christmas? Load up with the coal already. But what if it's bad coal? Who cares? Trust me, James. Fill up with coal doesn't matter the hopper. <coughs> oh, my beautiful paint will be ruined now. <laughs> so it is, so it is. Come on, James, to Vickers Town we go. Fast as you can. We want to be really useful, right? <laughs> <coughs> this coal tastes horrible. I can't use it. Oh, trust me, James, it'll be fine. Let's get going. You're wasting time sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 This train is so heavy though, and and the coal is very bad. Keep going! Don't stop now! You're doing well so far! <laughs> train over the hill James it'll be easy oh. <laughs> ah. Oh. Ah. come on Edward please help just give me a push up the hill Nobody's going to help me. The only one who will help me is me. I've been so rude to everyone. I just want to go back to my shed. It's a dirty goods train. I'm covered in soot. I've got bad coal and I can't climb hills well. But all I can do is try. <laughs> I can do it. 
No, he can't! <laughs> I'm... I'm going to do it! What? No! Okay, plan B, guys! Oh, wow. Things feel so light. What did you say, Ruffy? Finally! Let's get down this hill, full speed! Yeah, see, Ruffy? <laughs> you really thought I was a friend? And no one else could see you? How gullible can you get? They're ignoring you for being rude. And after a big crash like this one, they will hardly speak to you ever again! <laughs> then I won't crash! I can't see! What's going on? There's smoke's everywhere! You were trying to lie to me. You tricked me into going into that old yard and taking on bad coal because you knew I was upset. You were trying to make me feel worse, trying to get me angrier so that I'd be distracted and you'd make me crash. It won't work anymore. I can't see! I can't see! Just give up, James. If we can't crash you, we'll make you late. Hold back! Hold back! I've... I've broken down, but the train is here. You're going to ignore me too, Sid? I know I'm stubborn and stuck up. Well, yes, you can be a bit... Uh, what's the word? Rude, selfish, arrogant, vain... Well, one of those words, anyway. <laughs> but you managed to get here all by yourself. Even with this troublemaker behind you. That's something to smile about. But I think everyone's been ignoring me. And I just feel so bad for how rude I've been to them. Well, perhaps you should go and find them. And say you're sorry. They're your friends. And I'm sure they still are. They'll understand. Well, at least I think so. I forget who we are speaking about. <laughs> oh dear, this one has pretty rusty brakes. It'll need repairs. Don't worry. Uh, Jimmy, I'll go and put it in the siding on its own so I can remember to take it to the works later. Get another tooth. Oh. Oh. Ha! That'll teach you, you troublesome track. Thanks, Sydney. No problem, James. Uh, thanks for what? not really fussed about this taking long, Victor. All my friends are ignoring me because of how rude I've been to them. Today, I was so rude to them, they won't let me back into Tidmer's sheds. Well, your repairs won't take that long. Just a simple clean out is all. I know I'm not the best friend at times, but I really do care about my friends. I just can't help myself sometimes. I just want them all to understand that... Oh. Apology accepted. Ah! Gordon, how long have you been there? 
Most of the afternoon, Gordon's just been here for some minor repairs. Yes, and James, I'm sorry if we upset you by kicking you out of the sheds and ignoring you. We just wanted you to understand that how you behaved was wrong. But I feel we took it too far. No, no, it was far enough. I realise now that I can take things too far. And I just want to know if we can still be friends. We'll be waiting for you at Tidmouth Sheds. Everyone will be waiting to see you there. All sorted, Gordon. You're good to go now. Well, my repairs are all done, so I'm off to Tidmouth Sheds. Good night, everyone. When you feel like you're ready, James, come back to the sheds. I... I realised you probably don't want to talk to me. I realised that I could be very rude and vain. And yesterday I was extremely rude to you all. I'd been so obsessed with being the centre of attention and trying to do my work without having to shunt. I never realised how much I was upsetting you all. <sighs> I've just been worried about losing my friendships with you. Apology accepted, James. We don't expect you to be perfect, but hopefully you're not as arrogant anymore. <laughs> but I mean fancy. Taking advice from a troublesome truck, especially on where to fill up with coal. I heard it was Scruffy at the head of your train, James. Scruffy? You mean that truck that Oliver pulled apart all those years ago? Oh no, not him. He's the most troublesome of all the trucks on Sodor. It's fine, Thomas. I managed to deal with him. Sydney crashed him off the rails. Serves him right for trying to trick me. You're looking a lot more cheerful today, James. I feel a lot more cheerful, Thomas. I think that my boiler getting cleaned out really helped. And I hope we have no more incidents like this again. Maybe we might see a different James from now on. Well, I certainly hope so. Don't you? It was a very rainy day on the island of Sodor. Bill and Ben, the tank engine twins, were making their way back to their shed after a hard day's work. Hurry up, Ben! I want to get back to my shed quickly! I am hurrying up! This rain is making the rail slippery! Well, at least the rain isn't causing too many problems for us. Thomas was making his way to Farquhar for the return journey back to Knapford. He was just approaching the station when... Oh! Here comes Percy! Yes! He's coming in awfully fast! Oh! They're pushing me! They're pushing me! Oh, look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Oof. Oh my, what on earth happened? They crashed. Are you two all right? Oh, I think so. Uh-huh. Soon, Emily brought Rocky to help lift Thomas and Percy back to safety. Now then, 
Thomas and Percy, what happened? The troublesome trucks were pushing me, and my wheels slipped on the wet rails because of this rain. Oh, bother this rainy weather. It's been nothing but a problem for us, and now it's put two of my engines out of action. Now who can I get to run the branch line for the time being? Wait a minute. That gives me an idea. Emily, take Thomas and Percy to the steamworks, please. I'm off to make some arrangements. The next morning, the Fat Controller went to see Bill and Ben at the clay pits. He had some exciting news for them. With the heavy rain recently, work up here at the clay pit shall be halted until the weather has cleared up. I've arranged for Marion and Timothy to work elsewhere, and since Thomas and Percy are being repaired at the steamworks, I'd like you two to watch over Thomas's branch line for the time being. Oh, sir? Running a branch line? Yes. If all goes well, this could lead to new opportunities for you both to do more work outside the clay pits. So I want no trouble from either of you. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir! sir. <laughs> My very own branch line! You mean, our branch line? Well, it's still Thomas's branch line. You two are just helping to run it for a bit until he and Percy get back. <laughs> well, either way, we know all about running branch lines. Do you, though? Of course we do, Timothy. The clay pits are at the end of Edward's branch line. And we work at said clay pits. Which means we work on a branch line. So we know all about them. If you say so. Yeah, we do say so. We just did say so. <laughs> oh, hello Bill and Ben. Guess what, Edward? The fat controller has asked us to run Thomas's branch line while he and Percy are away. Really? Well, congratulations to you too. But this is a big responsibility. Running a branch line is very serious business. There are passengers that need to be brought to their destinations on time, and goods that need to be delivered safely. Not to mention it's a lot bigger than the clay pits. Oh, no need to force Edward. We can manage it. Yeah, it can't be that hard. Hmm, well, we shall see then. Oh, morning, Bill. Ben? The Fat Controller told me you'd be here to help out. That's right. All your problems are gone now that we are here. The Fat Controller thinks very highly of us. That's why he put us in charge of this branch line. <laughs> Only for a while. Anyways, there's a lot to know. There's passengers that need to be delivered in Annie and Clarabelle, stone trucks to take to the harbour, milk to deliver... Toby made sure to tell Bill and Ben everything they needed to know and do. But Bill and Ben felt they didn't need to be told what to do. They thought Toby was being bossy. It would help if you stopped by the platform. That's where the passengers get off. Oh, all right, all right. Taking on water? Yeah, what about it? That's milk, Ben! The water tower's over there! Ugh. Soon, Bill and Ben were beginning to feel fed up. Huh, that silly Toby, thinking he can tell us what to do. But he can't, so we'll show him. Make sure you two wait for Mavis to deliver the stone trucks from the quarry. I'll be back later. The line up to the quarry runs alongside the road. Mavis is always careful here, especially at the bend where the road crosses the line. Whoa! Watch it! A 
I've been asked to help move a few trucks further down. Toby's been a little held up. <laughs> Toby's got to go to the quarry in a bit. Let's go up there now and mess it all up. Good idea. Job's done. I'd like to see Toby sort that lot out. <laughs> <laughs> what good are useless trucks to you? I could carry all that stone easily. Oh, really? Is that right? Of course it isn't, Bill. This lot he couldn't carry a load of feathers. <laughs> and even that would be a struggle for him. Oi, you want to say that again? But the twins had forgotten all about Mavis. Mavis was very annoyed to find the quarry in such a mess. Good grief! This'll take ages to sort out. By the time Mavis had rearranged all the trucks, she was very late. Come on, snail on wheels, get moving, I'm already loaded. Get off my bonnet! Someone messed all my trucks up! <laughs> Not my fault you're so slow and useless! <laughs> As Mavis approached the crossing, she saw the lorry again. Stop pushing, you lot! Stop! Stop! Uh, oh, 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 look out! Look out! Ouch! Ow! That hurt! Rotten rails! Breaking my concentration! Oh, all that hurts. Don't worry, Mavis. A quick trip to the laser works, and you'll soon be back in business again. Thanks, Norman. But I'm worried about the quarry. There'll be more work for Toby. Mavis's manager asked for an engine to cover her while she's being repaired. I suggested you two since I heard that you helped to cause her accident. You messed up the quarry yard and then antagonized that lorry. But uh, we never meant for her to crash, Toby. Honest! But she still did, didn't she? Honestly, you two, stop thinking about tricks and games and start thinking about working hard! Old engines, they won't listen to us. Yeah, it's not even our fault that even happened. Toby now had to make longer journeys down to the harbour, which made him nervous. I'm just worried about my small water tank. What if I run out or the water tower is broken? Don't worry, Toby. You'll be fine. We still haven't shown that Toby what for. Don't worry. We will. We have to shunt for Mavis while she's away. Toby has to collect the trucks. Let's teach him a lesson. Next morning, Toby woke up bright and early, but Toby soon found that Bill and Ben were late. Uh, sorry. We're late, Toby. Uh, there was a, uh, a cow on the line. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, uh, you better hurry. Hmm. Right. 
Well, I can't waste time. I have to go. When Toby arrived at the harbour, there were so many trucks that there wasn't any room for the ones he brought. Phew! Some train, that is! That's not just a train! That's a mega train! I bet Bill and Ben did this! We could take one half and then come back for the rest, but we haven't time! Or we could just take all of them now. I'm sure I can do it. So Toby buffered up to the very long and very heavy train. Right then, that's all of them. B but how? I guess us old engines aren't so bad after all. Uh oh. Now what's this I hear about you causing a lorry to get Mavis sent to the diesel works? And making oh, Toby uh, put uh, at least um... 50 loaded trucks? I, uh, oh, I had hoped you two would work well, but it seems I was wrong. Oh, please, sir, uh, give us another chance. Oh, we're sorry. Oh, we never meant to make Mavis crash. Oh, we just felt cross. Hmm. All right, then. Just one more chance. But any more errors and you will both stay in the shed. Goodbye, dear. I'll be seeing you later. Hang on a minute. Where's my car? The fat controller's so cross with us. We've just been messing things up. Yeah, but I don't see how we can make things any better. Just then, Bertie arrived looking very worried. Hello, you two. Did you hear the news? What news? The fat controller was burgled last night. The thieves stole his gardening trophies. And then, they had the nerve to steal his car to carry them away in. Not his car, but he loves it so much. The very same. Take care, you two. Oh, hang on. Did you see that? What? That car ahead. The blue car. Uh, uh, let's go a little faster. That's the Fat Controller's car, all right. And there's two men in it. They must be the thieves. Well, we can't let them get away, can we? After them, you two. The chase was on. I've got an idea! Get a pencil and some paper, and something to put the paper into! Oh yeah! And then, we can throw the message out to the next signal box! Police! Police! They're trying to go over the crossing! They won't! Oh, no you don't! Hello, hello, hello! What's this then, eh? Later that afternoon, Bill and Ben took the Fat Controller to the top station. He stood on a trolley and told everyone what had happened. I want to give a huge thank you and congratulations to Bill 
Ben and their crews for their prompt and heroic actions. Now, Bill and Ben are cheeky and mischievous and have caused trouble a number of times. But they can be heroes too and very reliable. I think we can all agree that today they have once again proved themselves to be really useful engines. And everyone else agreed. Fucking blind motherfucker! Percy was not feeling himself ever since Gordon retired from the Express. He was cross with his brother, the Flying Scotsman, because of what he said about Gorn's record attempt. Why, Percy, whatever's the matter? You look really upset. Oh, it's nothing, Gordon. Uh, how about you? I'm doing quite fine, thank you. Just got to deliver some goods to Brendam Docks, and the rest will be going to Kirk Ronan. Thank you, Charlie. Now I must go. Gordon, don't you feel unhappy about pulling trucks? You usually hate goods trains. Something you have to understand, Percy, is that all work on a railway is important. Even good trains. Percy really cared for his friend, but he wasn't sure how he could help him. Good evening, Percy. How was your day? It just got ruined. Why? What's the matter? All because of him. Flying Scotsman? Yes. Gordon hasn't been feeling himself lately because of what Scotsman said to him. I feel really worried. I don't know what Scotsman said that made Gordon change. I think it's best you don't get involved, Percy. I don't tend to get involved in big engine squabbles myself. Trying to argue and him won't change anything, and he's gone. Note to self, never give advice to Percy. He won't listen. Whoa, oh, oh. I didn't realise you were there. <laughs> you must be the little green one. Uh, Percy, that's it. I don't usually see you here. Why did you tell Gordon that he was no good at beating your record? Gordon is a nicer engine than you'll ever be. I beg your pardon? You've upset him a lot, and I don't know why. You're supposed to be brothers. Brothers shouldn't do this. Gordon hasn't been his usual self, and it's all because of you! Well, I can't help that I'm a stronger and faster engine than- I'll show you! Gordon is my friend, and I don't like it when others bully my friends. A lovely sentiment, yes. But it has been a busy day, and I need a rest before I head back tomorrow. Percy was feeling too tired to puff back to Tidmouth, so he would stay at Vickerstown for the night. The other engines were very excited to see Flying Scotsman. Oh, I can't believe it! The real Flying Scotsman! Staying in our sheds! It's an honour! <laughs> I'll say! Please, Mr. Scotsman, can you tell us about you breaking your speed record? Oh, yes! I'd love to hear about that! <laughs> 
You little engines sure are eager, aren't you? Gordon should have broken that record. Come again? Oh, here we go. You told Gordon something really bad to make him change. Gordon's not himself anymore. He used to be grand and booming and proud. He's just unhappy now. Gordon seems alright to me. He's happy enough to be pulling goods trains now, and not the Express. But I know Gordon very well, and I can tell when he isn't truly happy. Perhaps Gordon just needed a rest? He's been pulling the Express for years. Maybe he just wanted a change. Well, I think it's a splendid idea. My little brother is getting on in age, so I think it's time a newer engine stepped up to the plate. No engine can take the Express like Gordon can. I know it. Well, he's not pulling it anymore, is he? <laughs> Maybe Flying Scotsman could pull it instead. A world-famous engine pulling such an important train. That would make sense. Who would want such a big, bully brute pulling the Express anyway? His ugly mug would frighten the passengers away. Percy, that's no way to speak to a guest. Especially one who's such a famous celebrity. Flying Scotsman's just an engine like the rest of us. I don't care how famous he may be, he's still upset Gordon. He's changed him for the worse, and Gordon is my friend. But Gordon always used to look down on little engines like us. He was always boastful and pompous, charging about like he owned the place. Yes, but he is also kind and loving. He's a great leader and a great friend too. He looks out for everyone, and he knows what truly matters. Unlike some. <sighs> Alright then. Time for me to make tracks and head back home. Good. Then maybe Gordon might go back to his usual self. Now then, Rosie. I presume my coaches are all ready for my trip home? Yes, they are. All ready at the platform for you. Excellent. Guess this means I'll be taking my leave now. Farewell, my friends. Uh, hang on a minute, Scotsman. I remember seeing uh, a fault on some of your coaches yesterday. I'll just go quickly, uh, take them, and have them look over in the yard. Hang on, Percy. I'll go and fetch his train. No, uh, wait, Rosie. I I'll fetch Scotsman's train. <laughs> okay, now you're just being childish. Give me back my coaches, please. No! Not until you apologize to Gordon! <laughs> I thought you said you were going to fetch his train. Yes! I never said I was going to take it to the platform and leave it there. I'm back here! Finally. Now I can be on my way. What the? Hey, these are coaches. Percy! <laughs> oh, now you're just testing my patience! Up and now look at it! Ruined! This is just ridiculous! Somebody stop that confounded green caterpillar with red stripes!
<laughs> oh, you think this is funny, do you? I can't go at all without my tenders now. Good. Oh no! Percy, what on earth is the meaning of all this silly behaviour? Flying Scotsman's tenders and coaches are scattered all over the yard, and his train is running very late. Flying Scotsman was the reason Gordon stopped pulling the express, and became sad, sir. He told Gordon he couldn't beat his record, and he would never beat him. I wanted to teach Flying Scotsman a lesson, sir. I see. Well, I appreciate you caring so much for your friend, Percy. However, this isn't the right way to go about it. You have caused a lot of confusion and delay. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. You will fetch all of Flying Scotsman's coaches and his tenders for him at once. Yes, sir. Sorry, Flying Scotsman. We will try to get things sorted quickly so you can return home tomorrow. I'll let your owner know about the delay. <sighs> What's up with you, Percy? Something go wrong? I felt really upset about Gordon not being his usual self lately. I saw Flying Scotsman at Vickerstown, and got angry for him making Gordon feel sad. So, I made him late by hiding all his coaches and tenders. The Fat Controller got really cross with me. That wasn't a good idea at all, Percy. You shouldn't have done that. My brother can get rather annoyed if he is late for any reason. But you should apologize to him when you see him next. I know. I'm sorry. Honestly, I'm quite happy with my new life. I don't mind not pulling the express anymore. I feel like a whole new me. And we're all Gordon's friends, and stand by his decision. We'll always support him and each other, because we're a team. We look out for one another. Thank you, Gordon. And thank you, everyone. I'll find Scotsman tomorrow and say sorry to him. I think you're quite a brave engine, Percy. Silly, maybe, but brave. I don't know any other engines that would try to play tricks on the Flying Scotsman. Next morning, Percy hurried back to Vickerstown to find Flying Scotsman. Here, where's Flying Scotsman? I can't see him here. Oh, Flying Scotsman is now leaving with his train. Don't tell me you're going to play more tricks on him because if you do... Oh no! I have to talk to him. I need to say sorry. Oh, well, at least he's learning. Uh, the flying Scotsman! Uh, the flying Scotsman! I... I wanted to say how sorry I am for misbehaving and making you late yesterday. I felt really upset about Gordon and I wanted to try and make him feel better. So that's why I... Oh, I've had just enough of both of your silliness. You made me very late yesterday and now you're going to make me late again today! But I... You know what? I don't care. Just leave me alone, you silly little engine. Gordon is useless. Useless? But... He doesn't deserve to pull the express anymore. He needs to get it through a smoke box that he'll never beat me. Especially when he works with silly little engines that steal coaches like you. Now go away and stop wasting my time.
A few months had passed since Henry had been given both the Flying Kipper and the Express duties. At first, he enjoyed it, but it was beginning to take its toll on him. <sighs> oh, morning already. Well, better get to the docks. Um, Henry? You only just got back? But Henry was too tired to hear him. Ahoy there, matey. It be a bit early for you here, isn't it? Uh, Henry? Henry, watch out! What happened? Engine overboard! Henry, what's gone into you? Thomas says you left as soon as you arrived back from the express last night, and Salty says you didn't stop before the buffers. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I do enjoy both the express and the flying kipper, but I feel like by the time I finish taking one, the other's ready to leave. I have no time to sleep. Hmm. Is that so? Well, nonetheless, you need to go to the steamworks, so another engine will have to do your work. But perhaps we need a dedicated express engine again. News of Henry's accident soon spread many engines started to wonder who would be chosen to pull the express. If I wasn't just a tank engine, I would love to do it. Oh, maybe I'll get chosen? I used to pull the express on my old line. Oh, hey, maybe a hundred years ago you did. Me and Dougie should do it. The two of us could just as pure tough as going in any day. Rubbish. What we need is a real express engine. I'm an express engine, but probably not the one you were expecting. <laughs> Hello everyone! So Topham asked me to come up from Knapford Harbour to try my hand... Uh, ...wheel uh, at the express. No offense, Boko, but why you of all engines? Well, why not? They use diesels like me for the express on the mainland. I'd love to stay in chat, but have to keep the time. Goodbye! <laughs> the engines were speechless. Boko, are you alright? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, seems my engine doesn't like express speeds. <laughs> oh, dear. Not to worry, old friend. You got your passengers here, which is all that matters. Allow me to take the train on. It won't be on time, but it's better than nothing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Edward. Are you sure about this, Edward? Well, honestly, I'm not. But I was the express engine on the island many, many years ago. But outside of coaches being smaller, it shouldn't be too different. Maybe a little help up the hill would help, though. Of course, Edward. Whenever you're ready. Nia buffered up to the back of Edward's train to help him give him a push. And with a great heave, Edward started to pull the heavy train. Come on! Come on! Not far now!
red in the face and out of puff, Edward got to the top of the hill. With that, the weight of the heavy train pushed him across the other side, and he was able to coast down the hill all the way to Grogan's Gate. you here, sir? We are trialing Boko with the Express. His strong diesel motor should make a good replacement for Gordon. Diesel motor? Then why do I hear puffing? Edward? What's happened to Boko? Good afternoon, sir. He broke down at my station. So I had to take the train on. Couldn't leave the passengers stuck out there. Well, you have done very well, Edward. I will see to it that a diesel from the mainland will take the train on to Vickerstown. But now you deserve a nice long rest, while I try to figure out who will replace Boko. Oh, thank you, sir. With Boko out of action, the Fat Controller asked the Scottish Twins to take the Express. I'm so excited, doggy! Pulling the Express for the foremost time! Me too! But let's not get too excited. We had to prove ourselves foremost. No arguing! Oh, hey, When do we argue? Hey, point taken. First, things went smoothly. For a few days, the twins were managing the express well. This is Stoughton Doggy, but tis a pity we ne'er get to see the seats go on this fast. Aye, and tis lonely. With the trucks, they can be rude, but at least they keep an engine company. I like their silent coaches. Tis maddening. Twins screeched to a stop, just in time. No one was hurt, but the Fat Controller was very cross. You two are supposed to be concentrating and keeping a good lookout when pulling the Express. I'll be putting you both back on goods work until I can trust you two again. Lastly, Emily was allowed a chance to pull the express, and she felt very excited. Now, Emily, I expect good things from you. Finding an engine for a job has never been this difficult. I've made arrangements to the timetable so the passengers know to expect you a little later, given your age, so you'll have plenty of time to get there. Of course, sir. I don't need that many time. I'm just as reliable as Gordon. I'll match his time and prove it! Well done, Emily. Right on time. Oh, I wanted to be early so I can match Gordon's old times. I'll do it on the return. Hmm, well, if you're sure, but don't do anything reckless. What Emily didn't know was that her brakes were never built for high speed. As she approached Edward Station, it happened. Huh? What? No! Help! I can't stop! Are you okay? 
okay? Yes. Thank you, Nia. Don't move. I'll go get Lucky. Not as if I was planning on moving. This was all too much for the Fat Controller. At once, he decided to cut the Express down to half as many services and put anyone who was free onto the Express temporarily. It wasn't ideal, but it would have to do. Oh, good evening, sir. I hope you don't mind me being late here. I thought I would clear up the yard for tomorrow to make it easier in the morning. Of course I don't mind, Gordon. I dare say you're becoming a harder worker in your absence on the Express. Thank you, sir. I guess I have to do my best now that I don't have an important role to hide behind. That is good. I'm proud of you, Gordon. I take it you've heard about the hassles with trying to find a replacement for you. The other engines have told me some of it, yes. I didn't realise how hard the others would find it. Neither did I. But I think it points out just how special you are, Gordon. You could pull the train better than anyone else on this island. Really, sir? I never thought of it like that. Thank you, sir. You have given me a lot to think about. Oh, and one last thing, Gordon. If you would like to take the Express again, I would be more than pleased. Thank you, sir, for the offer, but uh, I think I will stick to my retirement, at least for now. As you wish. Hmm. I couldn't, uh, could I? Uh, no, of course not. I'm not worthy of it. Besides, I'm enjoying the good work. Fucking blind motherfucker! Ah, oh, fuck's sake, mates! Fuck! Gordon the Big Engine works on the island of Sodor. He is usually seen doing small jobs, such as delivering slow goods trains, running in the local, or shunting in the yard. Not that long ago, Gordon used to pull the Wild Norwester, a non-stop passenger service that runs from Napford all the way to Vickerstown. But nowadays, he takes things at a much slower pace by doing small jobs. The Express now alternated between different mainline engines. Sometimes, even the little engines had to triple head the Express. Henry, the goods work on the island is starting to become a lot busier than usual, so I'll be taking you off the Express work to help Gordon, James and Rebecca. Yes, sir. But who shall look after the Express? Well, I received a phone call from the mainland controller, and he has informed me that now that the work on his railway has begun to slow down, he is able to spare one of his engines for the time being. Oh, that's wonderful to hear! Is it someone we know? Ah. Well, yes, Henry, it is. The engine who will be taking over the Express from now on is... Flying Scotsman. Flying Scotsman, sir? With all due respect, is that such a good idea? He and Gordon don't exactly see eye to eye. Yes, I am aware of that, and I thank you for your concern for your fellow engine, Henry. But I'm afraid he's the only one the mainline controller can afford to be without at the moment. You and the others just do your best to keep an eye on Gordon, and make sure Scotsman doesn't do anything to provoke our number four again. I will, sir. I'll let the others know at Tidmouth. Flying Scotsman? He's going to be pulling the Express now? I'm afraid so. This isn't good. He and Gordon are certainly going to be at each other's smoke boxes. Well, knowing Scotsman, that 
bossy boiler's bound to cause trouble. Especially after what he did to Gordon. You're probably right, Percy. But we still must do our best to carry on with our work. We still have a railway to run after all. Mm, I suppose so. Do you think we should tell Gordon? Well, it might not be a good idea to say anything to him just yet, Thomas. Besides, he's gonna find out no matter what. Find out about what? Oh, Gordon! <laughs> find out about the, uh... uh that called the steamworks. Very dusty, you see. It'll make you cough and splutter from what Victor told me. Oh. I'll be sure to avoid that hopper then. So, we all know where we're off to, right? Me and Rebecca are off to the mainland with our trains, while you and James are heading to the docks with yours. Excellent! Come along, James, we mustn't dawdle. What'll we do? We're going to pass through Natford and Scotsman is sure to be there by now. Well, maybe he won't. For all we know, he might be delayed. Oh, who am I kidding? It's the Flying Scotsman. He's never delayed. Well, we'll just have to do what the Fat Controller said, and keep an eye on Scotsman to make sure he doesn't cause any trouble. Cinders and ashes! Scotsman? Why, hello there, Gordon. What are you doing all the way here at Knapford? Well, it seems that the Wild Norwester is in dire need of an engine. And being that you stepped down from that, your controller has called upon me to do the job from now on. <gasps> you pulling my express? <laughs> Not anymore. It's mine now. Flying Norwester coming through! Gordon, are you... I'm fine. Come on, James. Um, <coughs> right. Gordon and James made their way to Brendan Docks with their trucks. The red engine felt bad for the blue engine but he didn't know what to say to him. He just knew that he needed to be by his friend's side. I'm the greatest! Just watch me fly by! It's Flying Scotsman! <laughs> yes, yes. That's me, the Flying Scotsman. Here to make sure you all get to your destinations on time. <sighs> Last stop. You sure showed these diesels at Rowland and his gaffers, doggy. It was ye who knew how for to handle their trucks, Donny. Douglas, I tell ye, I couldn't ask for a better brother. Neither can I, Donald. Neither can I. little brother. Uh, 
sorry, Gordon, I should have said that. I was just passing, and I wanted to talk. About how much fun pulling the express was? About how I'm just never going to be as fast as you? About how I'm a failure of a design? No, that's not what I was going to say. Oh, so you've got something new to make fun of me for. Well, let me tell you something, Scotsman. I don't care what you think. I don't care about the names you call me. And I don't care how you think I'm a faulty engine. I'm happy with my life whether I'm doing jobs I was designed for or not. Gordon, please just listen to me. No, you listen to me. You can take the express, I don't care. You can even stay on Sodor forever and ever. I don't care about what you say. I don't care about what you do. I don't care if you're better than me. I don't care that you're my brother. Flying Scotsman, we may be related, but we are not family. Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> oh. Hi lads, it's Gordon. The Gordon? This trip will be the ride of our lives! Don't count on it. Those days are done. This is boring! Come on, Gordon! Get a move on, will you? Yeah! Aren't you an express engine? I was an express engine, but not anymore. Yeah, come on, Gordon! Give it a good sprint, will ya? No, I don't do that anymore. Oh, come on! You can do it, Gordon! Hmm, alright then. Gordon, coming through! Woo! On, on, on! Faster, faster, faster! travel at such high speeds anymore. Neither did I, but oh Rosie, it was the most wonderful feeling. Going at such high speeds once again was simply wonderful with the wind whistling across my funnel and my wheels whirring and, and, uh, oh, oh, what a wonderful experience it was to do it all again. <laughs> well, at least it's still good to know that there's still a bit of that speedy Gordon somewhere in your smoke box. Hmm, yes. Ah, another fantastic day pulling the express. You can take my coaches away, little box cab. I shan't be needing them till tomorrow morning. Yes, of course, but uh, what was that noise? Noise? What noise? When you stopped. It sort of sounded like screech or something like that. Well, I didn't hear anything. It must have been your radiator. You should go to the diesel works and get it inspected. Oh dear, Flying Scotsman, what's wrong with your brakes? Nothing! 
They're fine! Uh, I don't think so. Perhaps you shouldn't pull the express today. Not pull the express? Preposterous! Anyhow, it's too late to cancel my train at the very last minute. be in trouble soon. Well, uh, that's new. Dear, that's new too. Maybe they shouldn't have taken the express today. Good morning, Scotsman. Shall I give you a push to the other side? That hill can be very steep, and it's easy to get stuck. <laughs> Stuff and nonsense. I could get over that hill by myself easily. Thank you, Edward, but no thank you. that horrible noise! Scotsman! Scotsman! Wait! I think it's coming from your wheels! Oh, that's great! Another new noise. Well, it doesn't matter. I shall be on time no matter what! Ha-ha! <laughs> I did it! Oh no! I think I, I think I've broken my brakes. Oh, oh! I can't stop. The guard tried to put on the brake and find Scott from the brake coach, but then there was trouble. The guard hurried to warn the signalman about flying Scotsman becoming a runaway. Somebody help me! I'm a runaway engine! Scotsman, apply your brakes now! I can't! My brakes have failed! I'm out of control! <gasps> I'm going to get ahead of you, Scotsman! I'm going to try to slow you down! Hurry along. How come? We're not late. I know we're not late, but Gordon's speeding right towards us and he isn't slowing down. Fizzling fireboxes! What on earth was that all about? Thomas after him.
We're going to crash! No, we won't! <laughs> oh, I did it! I did it! Well done, Gordon! Well done! Did you see that? I sure did. What is the meaning of... Is that your angel? Yes, he is, and I'm terribly sorry for... Sorry? For what? He's a hero, is what he is. He stopped the Flying Scotsman when his brakes failed. If it wasn't for him, we'd... Well, we wouldn't be standing here talking with you right now. Oh, I see. Well done, Gordon. You managed to save your brother and those passengers from a nasty accident. I am very proud of you. Thank you, sir, but I was just doing what I thought was best. And it shan't go unrewarded. Whatever it is you want, I shall do my absolute best to see you get it. Sir, I would like to pull the express once again. It was a nice long break from it, but... I've been starting to miss going fast. I miss speeding down the tracks with the wind blowing across my funnel and my coupling rods whirring as I travel across the island. Then say no more. If it's the express you want back, then you shall receive it. Uh, Scotsman, that would mean you'd be taking over Gordon's goods work for the meantime. Is that alright? Yes, sir. I'm fine with that. Excellent. Now please excuse me. I'm off to make some changes to the schedule. Gordon, I wanted to say thank you for rescuing me today, and uh, I'm sorry. I've been an awful brother to you. It wasn't right. I was selfish, pompous, arrogant, and despicable. And it was completely unacceptable. So... I ask you, not as an engine, but as a sibling, do you think you could ever find it in your heart to forgive me? Nonsense! There's nothing to forgive. We're family, and that'll last forever and ever, no matter what our quarrels might be. Come on, lads! Now we're gonna go for a ride with Flying Scotsman! <laughs> Man, this trip to Sodor's been amazing! Here comes Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, engines and coaches, I give you three cheers to Gordon for saving the lives of the passengers on yesterday's express. After a long break from pulling the wild nor'wester, we are gathered here today to see the great return of it being pulled by the Northwestern Railway's number four, Gordon. It's great to see you back in action. It's great to be back in action. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. I'm heading to Vicar's Town too, you know. Oh, so you'd like a race, would you? I never said anything about a race. You didn't need to, I know that look on your face. I invented it. <laughs> of course you did. You were built before me, remember? Express coming through! What? Wait! That's not fair! You didn't say if you agreed to it or not! 